Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we will talk about an alternative definition of the notion of modules. So we have seen the following, uh, we need a ring R and what is a module? So M is suppose an R module, then what does that mean? It means that M is an abelian group and it has got a, a scalar multiplication by scalars coming from the ring R. Okay. So now uh, let us rephrase the axioms that scalar multiplication satisfies in a more compact form. Okay, That is going to be our, our goal for this lecture. So let us uh, first make some observations that if M is an abelian group, so recall M plus is an abelian group. Now let me define something called end of M, so where end stands for endomorphisms. Uh, by which we mean homomorphisms from the uh, uh, the group M to itself. So it is all F from M to M such that F is a group homomorphism. Okay, so this is something that I can uh, uh, I can consider given an abelian group I can look at the set of all homomorphisms from the group to itself. Now the key observation is that this this set and M actually has uh, some additional structure. So what can I do? Uh, and M itself has an addition operation. So it has an addition. What is the definition of addition? If I take uh, two homomorphisms f and g, then I can add them as follows. This is called pointwise addition. I can look at f of x plus g of x. This is for all x in M, and this would of course be also a homomorphism as you can check easily. Uh, the second important observation is that I have uh, a composition of maps. So I can look at f composition g of x which is defined to be f of g of x. This is for all x and m. Now f composition g is also a homomorphism. So f plus g and f composition g are in fact both elements of n m. In other words, they are both homomorphisms from m to m. Okay, so it is an easy verification which I will uh, leave you to do. So what does this mean? It means that the set end M actually has two operations an addition and well a sort of multiplication which is composition here and the key fact here key observation is that with respect to these operations the set of all homomorphisms under pointwise addition and composition forms a ring. Okay, so this is a ring. Now what is that? Uh, uh, entail you need to check all the axioms of a ring. So addition of course uh, is commutative is easy to check. Uh, a composition of maps is an associative operation as you have no doubt seen before and uh, what else is required the identity map. Okay, So we need to show well distributivity as well. So let us just check those two uh, axioms. So let us check the distributivity axiom that multiplication distributes over addition. So that means if I look at f composition g plus h then that is got to give me f composition g plus f composition h. So let us compute what is this homomorphism on x. This is by definition f of uh, g of x plus h of x. But the key, key thing here is that f is a homomorphism. Therefore, f of a sum of two things is just going to be f of the first guy plus f of the second guy. Okay? So this is because f is a homomorphism. So that is the that's the first distributivity axiom because well, well what is on the right hand side is exactly f composition g plus f composition h. So it is this guy evaluated at x by definition. Okay, So that is the first uh, um, distributivity axioms. You can check the, the other one similarly if I take f plus g of x, f plus g uh, um, sorry composition h. This is in fact simpler this is just directly by definition g composition h. Okay. Now uh, this is easy. And lastly, let us check the identity axiom. So I need to have an identity for the multiplication. 
and of course it's clear what the identity should be it's just the identity operator on m okay so let's look at i m which is the identity operator now i m uh, is well it satisfies this property if you compose the identity operator in either direction of course it gives you back the original function okay so i m is the identity map it sends x to x for all x and m okay, and that's a homomorphism so the key property here again is that the identity is in fact a group homomorphism okay so what that completes is the proof that the the set of endomorphisms forms a ring under these two operations the point wise addition and the composition of maps okay now uh, let's try to um, well let's let's try to see what we can get out of this this new structure so suppose m is a so if m is an r module okay that's given so what does that mean in addition to my additive group structure on m i am given this this map from r cross m to m right that's the scalar multiplication so what do i have i have a map from r cross m to m alpha comma x mapping to what we'll call alpha dot x the the scalar multiplication of x by alpha now this map uh, let's try and and encode it in the following manner uh, so it's it's the very same information but written slightly differently so let's do the following let's fix the alpha okay so i fix a certain scalar in the ring and when i do that what it defines for me is a map from m to m okay what map is this it takes each element of m to alpha dot x so alpha is fixed so this map of course is dependent on alpha but this is the scalar multiplication by alpha map okay so it's a map from m to m so let's check what are its properties so observe uh, axioms so remember we have axioms for the scalar multiplication so axiom number 1 of uh, modules says that if i take the scalar multiple of x plus y that's alpha dot x plus alpha dot y okay in other words if i look at phi alpha this map scalar multiplication map on x plus y it just gives me phi alpha of x plus phi alpha of y. In other words, phi alpha is a group homomorphism. So this belongs to this set end m that we just constructed. Okay, so phi alpha belongs to end m for all alpha in R. So that's the first observation that we are making. Now the second observation is so the first axiom in, is in some sense taken care of. The first axiom just says that this map phi alpha is a group homomorphism. Now let's encode the remaining three axioms. So let's look at axiom number two. So it said that, so this is axiom two of modules said that if I take alpha plus beta and scalar multiplied by x, the answer is same as alpha x plus beta x. Okay, now in terms of this map phi alpha, this is what it says. If I take the map phi alpha, which is scalar multiplication by alpha, take the map phi beta and I construct their sum Okay, this is now the sum in endomor in the endomorphism ring of M. Remember, this just means it's the point-wise addition. So consider phi alpha plus uh, uh, sorry, consider phi of alpha plus beta. That's the left-hand side. Scalar multiplication by alpha plus beta of x is the same as scalar multiplication by alpha plus the scalar multiplication by beta. In other words, it's the point-wise sum of these two endomorphisms. Okay, and this is true for all x. So another way of, of restating axiom 2 is to say that this map phi alpha plus beta is the sum of these two maps, phi alpha plus phi beta. Okay, it's, it's the point-wise sum. Okay, now axiom 3 similarly, you can already start seeing where this is going. The scalar multiplication by the product uh, phi alpha beta, uh, by the product alpha beta, this by definition is alpha beta uh, acting on x but that remember is the same as alpha acting on beta acting on x but that just means it's phi alpha composed with phi beta of x so this axiom 3 can be restated as follows phi of alpha beta is just phi alpha composition phi beta okay and axiom 4 finally just says that the identity map the identity element the scalar multiple uh, multiplication by the identity just gives me the identity map 
Okay, this just says 1 multiplied by x is x. So what I've done is to recast the four axioms in terms of this map phi alphas that I define. Okay, now all, all of this can now further be recast as follows. Consider the map. So let me now consider the following map. So remember I had fixed alpha so far. Now let me let alpha also vary. In other words, let me look at the map. So let's call this phi now. It takes each alpha to this scalar multiplication by alpha map. Okay. So consider this map alpha going to phi alpha. Now what we have shown is that axioms, so the, the foregoing discussion, axiom 1 says that phi alpha is in the endomorphism, axioms 2, 3 and 4 say exactly that phi is a ring homomorphism. Why is that? Well, because the, the operation of addition in this ring end m is exactly this pointwise addition. The uh, operation of multiplication in this ring is exactly this uh, uh, operation of composition and the identity in this ring is exactly this, this map identity m. Okay? So these three axioms here just say, say that this map phi is actually a ring homomorphism. Okay? So uh, and as you can easily check, you can sort of go back the other way uh, around as well. In other words, if you are given a ring homomorphism, you can from that construct uh, uh, a module in the usual sense of the word. So here is the definition uh, 2 of modules. So let me give you the second definition of modules. You can simply say an R module or this is all, uh, so I am always talking about left modules. Uh, so like I said last time, if I do not say anything, I always mean left. An R module M is an abelian group is an abelian group m plus together with a map together with a homomorphism of rings homomorphism of rings let's call it phi from the ring r to the ring and m this is another way of, of defining a module okay so what we have just seen is that if you use the first definition of modules, then from that you can construct this map phi. Okay, the map phi is just each alpha going to the scalar multiplication by alpha map. Conversely, if I give you a module according to definition 2, it satisfies definition 2, then you can show that it, it, it satisfies definition 1 as well. Okay, in other words, given this map phi, uh, given such a map phi, you can construct, can construct the scalar multiplication map R m to m as follows. If I give you an alpha and an x, since I'm, I am I sort of know what my uh, uh, phi should be doing, so I will just do the following. I take phi, I evaluate it on alpha, so that gives me uh, sort of the scalar multiplication map. So it is an element of n m and I evaluate it on x. Okay? So I can construct my scalar multiplication map in this way. Okay? So I am going to leave the uh, details for you to check. Uh, check that a module by definition 1 is also a module by definition 2. Okay? In other words, definitions 1 and 2 are equivalent. Okay? Is also a module by definition 2 and vice versa. These two definitions are equivalent okay? and the second definition is, is sometimes convenient. It is important to know this way of thinking as well. It is it's definitely far more compact. Right? It, it sort of encapsulates all the axioms into one single statement that you should have a map from R to end M which is a ring homomorphism. Okay? Now uh, let us look at some of our previous examples. Uh, of modules and see how they, they match up in this uh, point of view. So, let us do one particular example. Uh, let us look at the case of Z modules. Example, suppose my ring R is Z, the ring of integers. Then uh, recall that a Z module by definition 1, we, we more or less figured out that there is only one possible scalar multiplication that you can define on a module. 
and that turns out to be just the uh, you know the map which sends n comma x to x plus x plus x n times ok. So, uh, look back on the lecture uh, the one of the previous lectures, but now I just want to see uh, what I will get if I apply definition 2 ok. So, let us take r equals z and let me say um, I, I want to look at m which is a module over z according to my second definition ok. So, by say the second definition what does that mean? Suppose, suppose m is a z module according to my second definition i e that just means what am I given? We are given a map from, so we are given a, a, a ring homomorphism from <coughs> the ring r to the ring of endomorphisms of m ok and r here is just z, it is just the, the, the abelian group z ok. Now, this is this is sort of the scalar multiplication map right, it keeps track of the scalar multiplication uh, i e v r given a ring homomorphism like this. Now, observe last time we, we figured out that uh, according to definition 1 there is just one module structure z module structure you can give on an abelian group you cannot really make it a z module in, in any other way ok. Now, what that translates to here is that if you are trying to construct a ring homomorphism from the ring z to the ring end m well then there is actually a unique ring homomorphism ok. You cannot find two different ring homomorphisms from the ring z to the ring end m ok. So, uh, claim or little fact in fact not just to the to the ring end m if s is any ring if s is any ring whatsoever in particular I can take s to be and m uh, there always exists a unique ring homomorphism uh, from z to s ok. So, let us prove this um, well the ring homomorphism from z suppose I have a ring homomorphism f. So, suppose if f is a ring homomorphism so, observe that it has to satisfy many important properties in particular by definition the ring homomorphism sends identity to identity ok. So, the identity element so let me call this uh, multiplicative identity of s as 1 sub s. So, the integer 1 has to map to 1 sub s ok that is one of the properties that a homomorphism should satisfy, but as we have seen before I mean this is sort of the calculation we did earlier if you know what 1 maps to then more or less everything is fixed ok. Why? Because any other number n is just 1 plus 1 plus 1 so many times ok. So, this is just I take suppose n is positive then I can write n as 1 plus 1 plus 1 so many times which means that this homomorphism f must map f of n to f of 1 plus f of 1 plus f of 1 so many times. In other words it has to map it to 1 s plus 1 s plus 1 s added n times ok f of n has to be this there is no other choice for n positive ok. So, similarly if n is negative you now you, you just have to do the same sort of calculation we did before f of 0 is 0 and therefore, f of minus n is minus n ok. So, when n is negative show that. So, I'll let, let me leave this little step for you if n is negative show that f of n is just going to be minus of 1 s plus 1 s plus 1 s n times this is modulus of n times. Okay, and, and if n is 0 then of course, f of 0 is 0. So, that is also one of the first things that one should have done if n is 0 then f has to map it to the additive identity of s ok. So, if you are trying to construct a ring homomorphism from the ring z to any other ring in some sense you have no choice everything is forced on you ok and that is uh, really a reflection of the fact that uh, there are if I give you an abelian group I cannot really make it into a z module in, in any other way that is just one way of making it into a z module. Um, so, so that is sort of very very clear from this, this second definition from this way of uh, thinking about it ok. Now, uh, let us look at left versus right module. So, remember the axioms I had mentioned for uh, modules 
I also included axiom 3 dash if it were to be a right module we said that it should satisfy axiom 3 dash which says that uh, phi uh, I mean the alpha uh, so recall so suppose if m is a right if m is a right module if m is a right r module then the scalar multiplication map alpha x mapping to alpha dot x satisfies uh, axioms 1, 2, 4, but instead of 3, it satisfies axiom 3 dash and if you recall what this was, this says the product alpha beta on x should be beta acting on alpha acting on x. Okay, so the question is what does it become uh, in, in you know from the second definition point of view okay so uh, let me just state it it should be more or less clear equivalent uh, definition is the following analogous to the definition we gave for left modules so m uh, is a right uh, okay what is a right module a right module is an abelian group together with right module M is an abelian group it is called the operation as plus together with uh, well what are we given we are given a map from R to the set of all group homomorphisms of M it is called this map phi as before. Now the property that phi has to satisfy is the following that uh, this is what is called a ring not a homomorphism but what is sometimes called an anti homomorphism phi from r to n in other words phi is well it is almost a homomorphism phi of alpha plus beta is phi alpha plus phi beta uh, phi of 1 is 1 in this case the identity these two are okay but phi of alpha beta is phi beta phi alpha so it just goes in reverse okay so this is really what the axiom 3 dash now becomes that uh, phi of alpha beta should be phi beta phi alpha okay so what this again means is that uh, you know right modules are almost the same as left modules instead of being given a homomorphism to end m you are given a anti homomorphism you are given a map which switches the order of these two numbers of of those two elements okay so uh, this this switching of order of elements can sort of be again um, uh, you know formulated as a as a new notion so this is what's called the opposite of a ring so let r be a ring then the ring we define the ring r opposite so this is called the opposite ring of R. So what is the opposite ring? Well, it is to say that this is a ring, I must tell you what the operations are. The ring R op is uh, defined via the following R op is the same as R as a set. Okay, The underlying elements are the same as the elements before. Uh, what is the addition operation in this in this uh, ring so let me now put a circle around it so this is a new operation the new addition operation is the same as the old addition operation the new multiplication operation is the same as the old multiplication operation but carried out in reverse okay so this is the uh, thing and the identity element will turn out to be the same as the the identity element of r okay so this is the new identity is same as the old identity so check that this makes R op into a ring. Okay, so here is an exercise. If I am given a ring, I can consider or construct the opposite ring. So exercise prove that R op is in fact a ring. Okay. Now you know observe some obvious uh, facts here that if I take a ring R, I construct its opposite ring and I construct the opposite of the opposite ring. Then it is just isomorphic to the original ring. Okay. Why? Because the opposite ring involves interchanging the order and you interchange the order twice. 
So that is the first property. Uh, property 2 is that if the ring is commutative then this, this opposite ring business is really uh, not required. The opposite of a ring is the same or is isomorphic to the original ring if R is commutative. Okay. So, for commutative rings the opposite is the same or isomorphic to the original. But the converse is not necessarily true. You can have if a ring is non-commutative it can still be isomorphic to its opposite. Okay. And a standard example of that is uh, if I take the ring to be the ring of, so this is an example, if I take the ring of n cross n matrices, then uh, the, the, so what does the opposite ring mean? It means if I give you two matrices A and B, their new product is defined to be B A instead of A B. Okay. Uh, observe that from the ring to its opposite, I can actually define a very natural nice map. This is a matrix going to its transpose. Okay. And this map psi, observe the property of transpose is that if I take A B and transpose it, it is the same as B transpose A transpose. Right? It switches the, the transpose operation switches the order. What does this mean? This just says that this map psi is in fact a homomorphism of rings. I mean you have to check it also satisfies the additivity and so on. So, let me leave you to check this that psi is in fact not just a homomorphism, it is actually a bijective homomorphism. So, it is an isomorphism of these two rings. Okay. So, the matrix ring is in fact isomorphic to its opposite ring by means of this nice uh, map which is the transpose. Okay. So, uh, you know what is the reason for wanting to construct the opposite of a ring? So, observe again that a right R module, so here is the final important fact is the same as well or it becomes a left R op module. Okay. Uh, why is this? Because observe if I had a right module, so if M were a right, so it is a right R module, if M is a right R module which means let us look only at that axiom 3 which is the key difference. If I take the product of alpha beta and then act it on X, then the answer is just beta acting on alpha acting on X. Right, so that's the third. Uh, that's axiom three prime. This is what right module satisfy. But this product alpha beta that I have here, this is the product in the ring R. If I think of alpha and beta as being elements of the ring R op now, I mean R and R op are really the same underlying set. So think of the elements R alpha and beta as coming from the opposite ring. Then observe that this product alpha beta that occurs here is actually in, in the opposite ring, it is the it is the product of, of beta with alpha. Okay? So, this is the product of the opposite ring, product operation R op. Okay? So, what does that mean? It means that uh, if I rewrite this, this identity, this equation or axiom star, star can be rewritten as follows, take beta and multiply it with alpha but do the multiplication in the opposite ring. So, this is the R op voila multiplication then multiply it with x then the answer is the same as the right hand side which is beta acting on alpha acting on x. Okay? And now this axiom as you can see is, is axiom 3. right? This is now in the correct order. So, remember this holds for all alpha beta in the ring R. So, I can like I said R and R op are the same set and for all x in the module n. Okay. So, this new identity just means that if I con consider M as an R op module rather than as an R module, then it becomes a left module over R op. Okay. So, this is the key, key statement here, right modules over the ring are the same as left modules over the opposite, uh, opposite ring. And so, in some sense, whatever we prove for left modules will automatically hold for right modules with sort of the appropriate modification in notation and so on. Okay? So, we will usually only talk about left modules for this reason that you can 
quickly convert any result on, about left modules to right modules by just looking at this opposite ring construction. Uh, but that is not to say that right modules are not important. In fact, they will turn out to be extremely important in many things that come up. In fact, what is also very important is modules which have both, uh, I mean what are called bimodules, modules which are both left and right modules and so on. Okay, so it is equally important to keep thinking about left and right modules. Okay, we will stop.